Okay, so yes, today I'm here to tell you guys about a dilemma that plants in the Solix genotype face. These plants are ferociously attacked by the leaf beetle Fratora vulgatissima. This leaf beetle reduces plant fitness uh, through reducing plant growth. In turn, this beetle is fed upon by the omnivore Orthotilus marginalis. This um, omnivore belongs to the family Miridae. So just so I don't have to repeat the uh, Latin name a million times, I'm just going to call him the Mirid or something like that. Um, this Mirid feeds upon the larva and egg of this beetle. Right, so when plants engage in interactions with the enemies of the herbivores that feed upon them, they gain indirect resistance through these um, so-called bodyguards. And we have many examples out there of these bodyguards. Very f the very famous predatory ants and the ant acacia examples. We also have interactions with parasit parasitoid wasps and the such. Uh, in order for these interactions to actually um, provide indirect resistance to the plants, they have to meet certain criteria. And that is the body cards have to feed or attack the herbivore in a way that it reduces or controls the herbivore population. And this, in theory, should lead to an increase in plant fitness. So from this, you would then expect that natural selection favors those genotypes in which herbivore consumption or herbivore reduction is highest. So for this particular system, we know that the merit actually is an effective predator of the, of the leaf beetle and it negatively affects uh, the population growth rate of the beetles. However, as I mentioned, this is an omnivorous bodyguard. So that means that it can use plant the plant as its food. And you can understand that from a plant's perspective, that poses a dilemma. Uh, because if this mirid can feed on plants, this might affect its role uh, as a predatory bodyguard. Uh, for this particular system, the damage or effects on plant growth are assumed to be negligible. But when I went out there and tried to find a quantification of negligible or minor effects, I really could not find one. And I thought, well, this, this is very important for the interaction between the plant and the omnivore. We need to understand uh, how possible effects on plant growth could affect the strength of the interaction between the plant and the bodyguard. Uh, so I thought, OK, how do plants solve this dilemma? And we can turn to evolutionary theory to help us understand how this dilemma is solved. But I am going to first let uh, the very famous rapper, Canadian rapper, Baba Brinkman, who wrote a rap guide to evolution, tell you a little bit about this. So what you know about natural selection? Go ahead and ask a question and see where the answer gets you. It's survival of the fittest, but fitness is a tricky thing. It changes from place to place, from winter to spring. So why would he bother designing an albatross when natural selection already does such an excellent job just by balancing benefits and costs? Okay, so in case you guys didn't get that, it's a little bit fast. Um, what he meant is that it all boils down to benefits and cost. So really, the evolution and maintenance of any resistance strategy uh, bo uh, depends on the fitness cost that it entails for the plant and the fitness benefits to the plant. And so, yeah, with this, the plants can solve that dilemma. So there are different types of costs, or they can be manifested in different ways. We have so-called allocation costs, which are just resource-based trade-offs between resistance and fitness. We have ecological costs, which is when the cost of um, engaging in, in an interaction that provides resistance can affect other interactions negatively. And we have trade-offs among resistance. That is, um, being resistant to a particular herbivore can make you more susceptible to another one. So with this framework in mind, I decided to set up an experiment in which I would test how these myriad bugs affect the plant growth of the willows. So I set up a simple uh, uh, greenhouse experiment in which I exposed different solix genotypes to feeding by the myriads. But um, this is a tritrophic interaction. So uh, the interesting thing here is to compare 
how the effects of the myriads compare to those effects of feeding by the leaf beetle. So apart from just having plants exposed to the myriads, I also expose the plants to feeding by the beetles only and to feeding by the beetle beetles and the myriads together. So what did I find? And to my surprise, and perhaps to the surprise of many of you here, feeding by this myriad, which was considered to be negligible or minor, actually did affect the growth of the willows. Um, it reduced uh, the total growth of the plants. So here's cumulative shoot length on the y-axis. So that is how much they grew over the entire experimental period. And here we have uh, the growth of control plants and the growth of uh, plants that were exposed to feeding by the myriads. And there was a 7% reduction in total shoot length. But even more astonishing and surprising is that when I looked at the effects of the beetles only, that was identical. So the myriads are reducing growth just as much as the leaf beetles. And uh, together, the beetles and the myriads were more detrimental to plant growth than individually as one would expect. I just want to point out that uh, perhaps some of you might be thinking, well, how much did the beetles actually feed? Maybe they didn't feed any, anything, so uh, that's why you see those effects. But the, f the beetles did cause substantial damage to the plants. I mean, just here an example of leaves that were fed upon by the beetles. You can see that they, uh, these were okay. There were some that were even worse. And these are leaves that were fed upon by the myriads. So these led to these differences in growth rate, in, sorry, in total growth. So back to my original question, a plant's dilemma, is an omnivorous bodyguard worth the cost? And again, I'm really going with this um, evolutionary uh, uh, idea that it all boils down to the cost and benefits. So one potential cause of engaging in this interaction with the bodyguard is that there can be a reduction in plant growth. And yes, the, the, the cost might be low, but it was comparable to that of the leaf beetles. So what is the answer to that question? Yes, is it, it is worth engaging in the interaction. No, maybe, and I'm going to go with maybe. And I, just to quote uh, Baba Brinkman himself, fitness is a tricky thing. It varies from place to place, from summer to spring. What was that? From winter to spring. And really what he meant with that is that there is spatial and temporal variation in the costs and benefits of of yeah, of any strategy that plants or any organism in nature employs. So um, it will all depend on how these costs and benefits vary uh, spatially and temporally and whether they exceed or balance or each other out in some way. And this is something I am... Uh, okay, good, I can stop. The, oh, yeah, I was just going to say this is something that I am interested in continuing to explore. Uh, if I, I would be interested in quantifying the fitness benefits of these interactions to understand more, um, yeah, how the plant interacts with this bodyguard, both from an ecological and an evolutionary perspective. Thank you. <laughs>